Roar down the fast lane with Paul Bocuse. Gorge out on classic bistro fare. Then sail the river Saône into France's belly as Pierre teams up with the world's most famous chef. This time on Pierre Frenet's Cooking in Europe. Pierre Frenet's Cooking in Europe is made possible by the Grand Marnier Foundation and Michel Roux Chairman. The Grand Marnier Foundation is proud to support public television. He's the world's most famous chef, the creator of modern French cooking, and the consummate showman. Now into his 70s, Paul Bocuse continues to roar down the fast lane, and that's why even today, they still call him the leader of the pack. Paul-Francois Pierre Bocuse was born in 1926 into a family of working chefs. His parents ran a modest country inn in the small village of Collonges au Mont d'Or. During World War II, young Paul fought in de Gaulle's Free French Army alongside American GIs. After the war, Bocuse catapulted the chef from backstage to center stage. Ever the showman, Le Grand Paul became a legend in and out of the restaurant. Pierre met up with Paul on the Saône for the short boat trip downriver to Lyon. They have long been close buddies, going all the way back to the 60s, when Pierre and Craig Claiborne wrote in the New York Times about the rising Bocuse legend. The two sporty septuagenarians had a lot of catching up to do as they boated into the city. Lyon has long simmered in Paris's shadow, in every way except one, eating. Lyon is France's belly. No other French city enjoys such an alluring array of restaurants, from the three-star gastronomic shrines to the famous Lyonnaise Bouchon, literally hole-in-the-wall home-style eateries. Even the hotel food soars to Epicurean heights here in Lyon and nowhere more so than at the dramatic Relais and Chateau, Villa Florentine. Overlooking the city rooftops, this 17th century convent has been transformed into a luxury hotel, just the place for Pierre and his bride Betty to stay when making their pilgrimage to Restaurant Paul Bocuse. The landmark restaurant bursts with bright vaudeville colors. The name and image of Bocuse are found everywhere. There's Bocuse Jam, Bocuse Dishes, Bocuse Tea, and Bocuse's complete line of liqueurs. Even the artwork screams Bocuse. Bocou Bocuse. Outdoors, the artwork continues. Paul took Pierre on a tour of the bright comic book murals outside his restaurant, recounting a who's who of gastronomy, spiced with some classic Bocuse humor. The walk continued past two centuries of cooking highlights until the two masters reached something a little more current and familiar. So much for history. Paul wanted to show his old buddy his new style with a recipe for rouget, a smaller version of red snapper with a crispy potato crust. Recently, Paul developed recipes like this in order to drop 58 pounds from his once hefty frame. It took him four years to do it, uh, but slowly he's losing weight and he's very conscious of what he's doing. So now, what are you going to do for us? Oui, alors voilà, là on va faire une recette très simple. On va faire un rouget, yes, un rouget small, de la Méditerranée. This is a small fish from the mid, a rock fish from the Méditerranée yes. called rouget. En écaille de pommes de terre. C'est facile, aujourd'hui on trouve des filets de poisson un peu partout. You could find those filets set already prepared, but uh, if you could do it yourself, it's better. Une, une pomme de terre que j'aime beaucoup, Idaho. He's going to use so that uh, there are very large potatoes. Uh, he loves ah. the Idaho potatoes. Donc on a fait des... He cut them very thin. On a fait des rondelles de pommes de terre, là. Ces rondelles de pommes de terre, on va les découper comme des petites pièces de monnaie. He's going to cut it out, you see. Ah, alors avec... Uh, Is the, with the cutter, it's about a voilà. three quarter of an inch wide run. He cuts it out, and uh, he's going to use about 20, about 20, oui. 20, 20, 20, 20 de feet de pommes de terre. Voilà. voilà. Une fois qu'elles ont été faites, on les met à saler avec du sel. Just put salt. 
du, un, peu, un peu de beurre fondu. Un peu de beurre. Et puis maintenant, voilà. on va pouvoir monter notre rouget. Alors le rouget. C'est de fil à 10. On va le skin. Alors pour que les écailles vont se tiennent, on y met un petit peu de dorure. Il utilise his yokes have a little bit of water with a brush just brush it over on va ranger les écailles de pommes de terre it's going to take time but he's going to cover that on commence par la queue and, et, uh, et donc on range les pommes de terre it takes time and very slowly voilà c'est you know, a labor of love ça refait les écailles voilà. du poisson and uh, you do a new scale with the potatoes voilà et les pommes de terre sont fines elles ont été salées Hein, so they blanch the potatoes, they blanch a little bit with a little bit of salt and then they brush with butter. They're gonna, he's going to put them in the refrigerator so the butter is going to congeal, it's going to stick together. So it's, and then he's going to cook it after. So it's really time consuming, like he Ça said, but uh, it's fun, it's, uh, it looks spatule, very nice, voilà. it looks beautiful voilà. after it's cooked. Voilà, donc le poisson est bientôt fini. Hein. So he cook it, like I said again, only on one side, on the scale side. Voilà. Now Paul is going to make the sauce. Voilà. He's going to make it for that, hein, for oui, four. Oui, pour quatre personnes. Four Alors, person. le, le jus d'un demi citron, hein. Half a lemon. Oui, bien pressé, hein. Bien pressé, yeah, you press it. You remove the pits too and everything, yeah, very nice. The juice of half a lemon. Voilà. Là, on va rajouter les herbes, hein, c'est-à-dire la ciboulette. So it's about a tablespoon of a chive, chopped up chive. La ciboulette. Le And there's a, about a tablespoon of chervil leaves. Le cerfeuil. La tomate. He's got about two tablespoons of diced skinless tomatoes. Hein? La tomate donne un peu aussi d'acidité. Yes. Bien sûr, on va poivrer. A little bit of pepper, freshly ground. Salt, as Et là, well. on va mettre l'huile d'olive, hein, une bonne huile d'olive. So you Vous voilà. uh, voilà. yes. voyez, c'est facile, Cuisine simple, mais bon produit. Voilà. It's very nice. Very simple, easy to do. And that's going to be a sauce for the fish after it's cooked. So voilà. Easy, Paul. Alors là, dedans, on va mettre une petite goutte d'huile d'olive, pas beaucoup. Hein. Nous utilisons très peu, comme un teaspoon d'olive oil, on va, faire, on va faire chauffer. C'est une poêle avec, yeah, avec le nostic. teflon. Hein. Yeah. Et comme je vous ai dit tout à l'heure, on va cuire que du, côté, que du côté des pommes de terre, hein. c'est-à-dire yeah. de ce côté-là. Hein. Alors voilà. On va cuire sur side, côté, le potato voilà. side. Et là, on laisse cuire. Et quand euh, donc euh, le filet a été salé, on va le ressaler peut-être un petit peu de ce côté. Hein. Un peu de sauce. Voilà. Un peu de pepper. Ah, C'est le bête, hein. Ça, je dis, voilà. Un petit peu de poivre. J'aime bien le poivre, moi. Voilà. Yeah. Et là, maintenant, on pepper. va laisser cuire. Hein, après... Alors, vous êtes là. Combien de temps ça prend Oh, ça prend 5-6 minutes. Ça dépend de l'épaisseur oui. du... Oui, hein, oui. Il faut que les pommes de terre soient bien dorées. Il faut qu'elles soient dorées, oui. Et vous pouvez voir quand elles sont brûlées sur le côté. Voilà. Side there. voilà. Il va monter oui. doucement, hein. Voilà. And you baste it once in a while. Yeah, you baste it with a... Oh, this is a really low calorie. Elle est hein? belle, hein, l'huile. Yeah. Oh, mais yeah. l'huile d'olive, hein, c'est formidable, hein. You know, I learned to... I never cooked with olive oil before, you know, in, my, when I, in the old days. But I'm learning about uh, olive oil, it's very nice. Voilà, ouais, alors là, maintenant, on va le retourner hein, un petit peu. Never see that in the voilà. On le laisse cuire là très peu de temps. Then hein? and you turn it off. Oui. You, tu tu l'arrêtes. On l'arrête là. Voilà. Ça cuit, ça mijote euh, tout le temps. Voilà. You don't want to overcook it. Hein? Oui, oui. Non. C'est pas qu'il soit trop cuit quand même. Ah non, pas trop, pas trop cuit, pas trop cuit. Oui. Là, là, il est bon. Alors bien sûr, on va mettre la sauce là. La sauce avec la tomate, hein, c'est très joli. Ah, hein. oh, yes. Alors, pour la. Could you serve de, de, tu peux servir des légumes avec ça à part Oui, on salade? peut servir une salade. On peut... Nous, on aime bien souvent, on met avec ça un épinard en branche. Ah, oh, de spinach. Oui, oui spinach. It goes well with sauté spinach. You could saute them right in here. It's very simple and uh, beautiful.
Voilà, Pierre, si tu veux goûter. Right, I am gonna taste it and, uh... oui, oui. Alors, il doit être juste euh, cuit euh, rose à l'arête, comme on dit chez nous, hein, parce que oui, le, oui. le poisson est très très frais. Oui, oui. Voilà, alors donc la chair est très délicate, avec l'olive. Le... Mmh. Very good, very delicate, that's nice. C'est ça. Alors, beaucoup. C'est pas trop cuit, c'est très ah bien. Non. Voilà, il faut que les pommes de terre soient cuites. Hein. This is crispy, the potatoes voilà. are cooked. Quand les pommes de terre sont cuites, c'est frais. Yes. Et puis c'est un plat rafraîchissant. Very nice, very well done. Anybody could do that, it's so simple. Sunshine marks the newest Bocous venture, a bistro called Le Sud, the South. The hopping restaurant stands right off the Rhone River. Paul has turned his talents to heartwarming, less expensive and profit-producing bistros. Ever the clever marketer, the great chef has stamped each of his outlets with a strong culinary theme. In this case, the sunny flavors of the Mediterranean. The traditional Provençal pizza is reinterpreted by Bocuse by adding a sexy layer of smoked salmon. The main course came from North Africa, a Moroccan stew called tagine. Pierre was surprised to learn that Paul ranks North African cooking as one of the world's greatest cuisines. The two masters could have lingered in the sun all afternoon, but as always, the lure of the kitchen drew them back to work. Bocuse's signature dish is a whole breast chicken cooked in a ceramic tureen and covered with a spectacular dome of puff pastry. To give the chicken an upscale, low-cal panache, Bocuse uses perfect $100 a pound black truffles. Alors voilà, ça c'est une truffe du Périgord, truffe noire. Alors donc on va faire des lamelles. Des, des lamelles de truffe. Yeah, about a quarter, uh, one eighth of an inch uh, slices. Alors une sur la. The regular truffles, voilà. the French truffles from Perigord, beautiful. I could smell the flavor right ah, from oui. here. Hein? Mm, ah, oui. Très bien, oui, ça sent. Oui. D'habitude, maintenant la saison des truffes fraîches est finie, mais d'habitude on fait yeah. ça avec des truffes fraîches. Uh, this is those truffles. He, he preserved them themselves. Oui. But uh, you usually use fresh truffles, but the season is over. It's around the fall. That's what the. Alors là, on passe. On, là, il faut bien dégager la peau. So you loosen up the skin. Bien, like bien this. dégager la peau là. The front. Oui, la volaille truffée est toujours une spécialité très, très lyonnaise. Alors on met une, une. On a on a leg on sur la cuisse. Sur la cuisse là. One on the leg right here. Une là sur le thorax. One on the breast. Hein? C'est très important de truffer parce que ça parfume. So you could put as much as you want, right? Ouais. On peut maintenant combien deux de chaque côté? Oui, deux de chaque côté. Sur la, la poitrine, une, voilà. two on each breast, and one on the leg. Voilà, là sur la poitrine. Donc c'était la, la volaille truffée comme ça. C'était toujours une recette de, de la mère brasier, yeah, hein? This la is fameuse, a very old recipe. Mère brasier is a very. Alors voilà la volaille. Donc, vous voyez, here. elle est bien, elle est bien truffée. Hein? Nice, c'est beau, hein? C'est-à-dire c'est truffé sous la peau. Yeah. Alors pour lui donner un peu de goût, on va mettre la salée This, avec un peu de sel yeah. de Guérande à l'intérieur. Hein? A bit of salt, that's oui. sea salt. Pour pas que le bouquet garni, je le mets the à l'intérieur. The bouquet garni which has uh, two some sprig of parsley. C'est une recette très simple. Hein? Of, uh, très, thyme très, très simple, and one hein? belly, one small belly. Voilà, alors après donc nous avons notre soupière, ce qu'on appelle la soupière à lyonnaise. Mm -hmm. C'est une soupière qui tient 3 litres. Donc on met la volaille à l'intérieur. This is typical terrine that the from the area here, usually they make onion soup in a smaller one. Voilà. Alors donc on a mis les légumes, les, les, les légumes donc quatre petits oignons nouveaux. I put the onions, Onion. four onions. Après, on avait mis les navets. Turnips, four of them. Celery. Celery knob, knob celery, but you, you could use uh, celery in branch too. You know, it doesn't make any difference. The carrots, the licks. Carrot. Petit pois. Peas. And the uh, string beans. There's no liquid here, and because all those vegetables they're fresh, and the chicken is very very fresh, was cooked two days ago, it was not frozen, and it's going to be only the liquid 
from the, Alors, the chicken. Voilà, un rond de feuilletage. And hein. the vegetables. Donc, euh, à peu près l'épaisseur. Euh, about a quarter of an inch. Oui, yeah. voilà. Alors, donc, pastry, puff pastry. on pose le rond de feuilletage comme ça. It's ça. about 10 inches. Voilà. Why? Et là, on va, on va le laisser prendre tout ça, avec la, un peu la chaleur de la... Mm -hmm. Il va se prendre. Bien. Bien fermé. C'est yeah, ce qui va faire, close it very tight. Ce qui va very faire le secret de la recette, c'est-à-dire que ça va faire une cuisine à l'étouffer. Et puis, alors bien sûr, une dorure avec un œuf hein, et un petit peu d'eau, bien doré. Un hein, peu de with the yolks of eggs. Ouais. Brush it. Ça, c'est pour que le feuilletage soit bien, bien doré. So, like again, the, the puff paste has to be a quarter of an inch thick. But you have to press it around it. It's, you have to really to seal it. You could prepare it at a time, and uh, an hour before eating, you just stick it in the oven. Okay, Paul. Uh, bon, on va mettre à cuire. Hein? Donc, euh, on va mettre cette volaille à cuire. All Alors right. voilà. Toujours. Bah oui. Ah voilà. Voilà. For uh, one hour. Hein? Voilà, on va cuire. Alors c'est prêt, Paul. Eh bien, oui, une heure et quart, euh, c'est prêt. Wow. Oh là là, oh. my God. C'est très chaud, hein? Well, it's, uh... Alors voilà, donc tout le parfum est à l'intérieur. Paul began the ceremony of removing the chapeau, a task normally performed by waiters out in the dining room. And out in the dining room, it was already showtime. Even in this day of expense account cutbacks and shorter, lighter meals, the French still loved to celebrate with a multi-course, multi-hour feast. Pierre and Paul sat down to their truffle-laden bird, served in the theatrical French style. Bocuse invented this recipe back in the 70s, when he was the first chef to be honored at the presidential Élysée Palace. The luxury chicken still shows off Paul's talents at their best, his touch for taking home-style cooking and elevating it to an unforgettable dining experience. In recent years, as Paul has edged past normal retirement age, some critics have said that the restaurant has suffered from his globetrotting. But after a meal like this, Pierre was happy to see that the Grand Master has maintained the highest of standards. After three hours at the table, Pierre headed to Lyon's other great hotel, the Cour des Loges. The stunning central atrium, occasionally transformed into a spectacular concert hall, was created by joining together four medieval homes. As Pierre relaxed to the classical music, the long day caught up with him. In the evening, Lyon's restaurants come alive, and a refreshed Pierre headed out for a night on the town with Paul. Their destination was another of Bocuse's new restaurants, Bistro du Nord. Here, the authentic turn-of-the-century brasserie of northern France has been recreated with gusto and style, starting with the elaborate shellfish bar. But apart from the shellfish, there was nothing low-calorie about the food. For years, Le Grand Paul stuffed himself with Lyonnais specialties from morning to late evening. No longer. But tonight, the two buddies knew this was a special occasion, not soon to be repeated. At dessert time, Paul drifted into a classic floating island, while Pierre let loose with a baba o' rum, a rich sponge cake laden with rum and accompanied by a generous dollop of whipped cream spiked with Grand Marnier. After the evening's dietary transgressions, Pierre was ready to return to God's good graces. The next morning, he asked Paul to join him in the kitchen to make a low-calorie recipe a banana and yogurt sorbet. The world's greatest chef was more than happy to pitch right in. Now, he's peeling some bananas. All that we need is three bananas, which you remove the, the skin, and I'm going to slice them very thin, like this. And we're going to put that in the freezer for about one hour. Okay? For one hour. 
and then after we are going to puree them in a food processor. Now we're gonna make the strawberry sauce. We got beautiful strawberry here to come from the south of France, near uh, Cavaillon, the south of Avignon. So voila, Paul, we're gonna put them in there. And the food processor here called Oscar. And we're gonna puree them. We're gonna make a puree avec ça pour, pour commencer. Tu tournes ça. On fait la purée, vous mettez le purée. It's a very good gadget. It's a combination, it's called Oscar. It's a combination of the uh, sucre blender and the sugar. Sucre. We're going to put half a cup of sugar. Grand Marnier, non? The Grand Marnier, yes, of course. Ah, oui. Grand Marnier, c'est normal. Que tu le mets, toi, hein? Bon. Deux cuillères de Grand Marnier. Et. This could be made with fresh raspberry too. Fresh as raspberry, if you do it with fresh raspberry, you, tu le tournes et on le fait mélanger, on les mélange bien. If you use fresh raspberry, you have to strain them. That's very important that you strain them because you got spits in it. So ah. uh, let's see. Et très it's joli. nice and smooth. Ah oui, très joli. Beautiful. Maintenant, on va les mettre là-dedans. On va mettre ça là. Et Très bien. Voilà. Et après ça, on garde son nettoie. We don't clean this. Okay. Because what I want to do... Maintenant, les bananes congelées. I want to put the banana, the banana in here. Voilà. OK, Paul, you could put that in there. They're frozen. We slice them very thin, you know, about a quarter, uh, one eighth or a quarter of an inch. And then you put it in the freezer for about one hour. And there's three bananas. They are not overripe. That's very important. Not to be overripe. So you pulse them. Okay, let's see. Oh, wow, come on, sir. We're going to see what it is. It's just kind of smooth already, yeah? Huh? Then you add the yogurt. The yogurt. The yogurt, plain. It's just a jolly color, rosé. Plain yogurt. If you want, you could use other yogurt. You know, today the yogurts, they come in different, different flavors. You got strawberry, raspberry, you know, whatever you like. Sugar, five tablespoons of sugar. And that's it. You pulse it. You pulse it. You're going to see if it has to be very smooth. It's got to be très bien mélangé. Ah, oh, c'est bien, hein? c'est onctueux, oui, oui. Maintenant, ça, on va le mettre Maintenant, dans le freezer, dans le, freezer. le congélateur. D'accord. This, we're going to put in the freezer, and we're going to freeze it for about one hour. OK, Paul, this has been frozen for one hour, and now we're going to put it together ensemble, hein? Oui. Toi, tu mets la sauce. Oh, elle est belle. Et moi, je vais mettre... Et l'inglais. Et I'm going to put... This here, right here, see? I put one here. It's very important to wet it a little bit, you know? And you bang it against a towel. And you, you kind of shape it. You don't want to, you could make it as big as you want, you know? But we're gonna, we don't want to, this is one portion. Again, the same thing. Kind of shape it like this. You round it up, and we put it right here. And uh, then we're gonna put the strawberry that I cut in half. Put it on the side. Okay. Okay. And then we put another one. And uh, Paul's gonna put a sprig of fresh meat right in the center. And he's going to cover the strawberry with the, the sauce. Ah, it's a great idea what you have. It's good, because it's very good. Voilà. It's hein, très bien. Voilà. On va nettoyer un peu, là, oui. comme ça. Et voilà, un dessert. This is a dessert. It's a low calorie. It's no fat. But if you only use cream, <laughs> let me tell you, it's not bad here. Pierre and Paul roared off to La Baie, Paul's nearby banquet hall where he has lovingly recreated his grandmother's 1920s vintage kitchen 
right down to the last spoon. It was time for toasts. The first salute, appropriately enough, was to grandmother, who had taught him so much about good cooking. The second toast took place before a mammoth turn-of-the-century music machine that Paul had rescued. Bravo to America and the Americans. Finally, they were ready to toast each other. With well more than 100 years of experience behind the stove, both had long, successful careers to celebrate. The two chefs had elevated French cuisine to new heights. Pierre in America, Paul in his homeland. Allez, santé. Santé à tous et merci à tout le monde. Vive l'Amérique et vive la cuisine. Vive la France et vive les Lyonnais. Et Chamond, merci pour votre accueil, formidable, maison magnifique. À vous, mesdames, papa. All the recipes from today's show and the entire series are contained in the companion cookbook Pierre Frenet Cooks with His Friends, published by Artisan. To order, call the number on your screen, 1-800-235-3000. The 224-page book contains more than 100 color photographs of the chefs, restaurants, food, and places Pierre visits in the series, as well as over 100 recipes. The price is $30 plus shipping and handling. Please have your credit card ready when you call, 1-800-235-3000. Pierre Frenet's Cooking in Europe was made possible by the Grand Marnier Foundation and Michel Roux Chairman. The Grand Marnier Foundation is proud to honor the legacy of Pierre Frenet.